This was made for the ladies. It's a, a women's slave belt. I have to disappoint you. I've got some big doubts on this. This is designed for use against male genitalia. Oh, Whoa. come on. <laughs> My name is Steve Santini. I buy and sell the darkest, most gruesome artifacts on the planet. Welcome to the dark side. For me, half the fun isn't finding a dark object, it's the hunt, which is why I love to hit places like packed antique malls. Oh, sweet. Check it out, rows oh, and rows and rows of stuff. Oh, man, lots of stuff. Oh. Aha. Eel shanking. <laughs> what the? This is an eel harpoon, man. Oh. It'd be attached to a pole, eh? The Grim Reaper. Oh, my god. Yeah. It's a small sight. Check out the old jewelry. A lot of silver in there. What is that thing? I have no idea. What are you looking at? Idea. This looks like a loop down. Excuse me, oh. sir. Sure. Hi, how you doing? Good. You know, you got this thing down there. I, uh -huh. I don't know what it is. I'd like to see it, though. Sure, it looks like some sort of a belt. Oh, look at the detail in that. It's beautiful. This thing's weird. I mean, it's got a date on it, 1794. Check that out, guys. What is it? From the information I got from a picker who brought it in a couple months ago, you're looking at an early Mid-Eastern, most likely Turkey, slave belt. A slave S belt? Slave belt. Not just any slave belt. Uh, if you notice how small this actually is, this was made for the ladies. It's a, a women's slave belt. Specifically for a harem. What are you asking for this? I don't see a price tag. If I had to come up with a number, based on what I know, I think it's worth a couple of thousand dollars. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's a bit of a risk. I, I never seen one before, like I said. It certainly looks like it could be what you're saying, but then again, it might be something else. How about 1250? It's the best I can do. That's fair. 1250? It's a fair price. Awesome. Steph, let's try it on. Yeah, you're Here. right. Yeah, Why don't you try it on? Me try it on? Yeah, put it around your head. <laughs> I'm meeting today with Professor Birnbaum. He's an expert in Middle Eastern studies, and I'm hoping he can tell me about the slave harem belt. My, my opinion is that it, it it would not be suitable for female waist. Really? Uh, it is. It doesn't look like oh, no. anything which would be uh, used in the Ottoman Empire, uh, which was where the palace was uh, full of highly sophisticated people. Even the servants and the servants of the servants uh, had incredibly beautiful handmade stuff. Not this, which is, well, is very it, rough. Is it not ornate? I mean, I, I, I see the engravings on it. Well, on? It's, it's, it's ornate in a kind of peasanty way. Uh, here, I've got some pictures of, of palace belts. Whoa! That is a... I see the difference. This is like something Elvis would wear. It's well, gold yeah. and jewels and... Beautiful. Beautiful. Much better than Elvis. Unfortunately, Obvious. the answer is harem, no. It could be something else, but certainly not harem. And not Ottoman either. It's not sophisticated enough. How much would one of these, you know, Uber Elvis belts be worth? You will be talking in the tens of millions. Tens of millions of so dollars? I, Steph's gonna hate me for this. If an expert in Middle Eastern studies, a professor can't figure out what this thing is, I wanted to research, dig deep, and see if she can find anything about those numerals and ciphers stamped into the metal. This is it. Wow, your, your uncle Mike was a hell of a pack rat. Whoa. Look at all this stuff. Yeah, well, he had this old barn for years and years mm. and years. I don't know where he got all this stuff. There's definitely some interesting stuff in here, Mike. My Uncle Frank passed away recently, and he left this barn with everything in it. And it's up to me to get rid of it now. Here's something absolutely hideous. Do you know what this is? The uh, nail puller. Well, it, it could probably pull nails, but it was designed to pull other things. You see, this is a bull castration tool. Ooh, oh, geez. Put it away, dude. That's awesome, yeah. man. Now, this, on the other hand, this guy's dark. Could, uh, yeah, it could chew his way through all kinds of flesh and bone. No, I have no oh, idea where that came from either. Sense. Fireplace tools. Nice. There's some strange tongs, eh? Oh, Jesus. Let me see those. 
They, oh my God, there's no way. You know what these look just like? Well, there was a pair of tongs like this. They used to call them crocodile tongs. Yeah. And they were used for torture. What do you want for them? Give me 200 bucks. Oh man, that's a, that's wow, a that's lot. I mean, it's missing. They're missing a tooth. They're missing, they're missing a tooth here. I don't know, they're pretty pitted. I was thinking 75. <laughs> what can you do? Can you do? I'll tell you what, give me 100 and you can have the, the, all the fireplace tools. You know what? If you don't want You want them? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll take them. Okay, you want them? Yep. Good. Done. 100 bucks. 100 you bucks. can have those and I'll have these whatever they are. But they look nasty as hell. This thing looks like a pair of crocodile torture tongs, but I have to be sure. My next steps are I'm going to take it to some experts and get Steph on doing some research. We have to find other examples to see if this thing's a match. I spent good money on this slave harem belt, and now I'm not even sure that's what it actually is. It's time for us to put our heads together and figure out what this thing really is. The only clue we're going to have here to, to nailing this home, there's some letters here in front of the date. Mm -hmm. If we can identify the font. I've already looked into that. You have? Yeah, the, you well, I found something similar mm -hmm. in this book. What is it? Well, the L looks like it's from a font from the Netherlands. The Netherlands? Yeah. This changes this whole thing now. You know, we were looking at it as a slave belt. I don't know, the, the Netherlands, to my knowledge, never had harems or harem slaves. I mean, uh, right. <laughs> wow, this changes the whole ball game. Maybe we're looking at it the wrong way. I mean, is it supposed to be like this or like, like a collar or something for an animal, maybe? Maybe a horse? Mm, a horse? Nah, it's too small for a that horse. That is pretty damn small. Whatever it was, if it's some sort of an animal, somebody went to a lot of expense to make this thing with all the engraving and stuff. Yeah. But it's a hell of a leap from a slave harem belt to a horse collar. You don't even know if horses had anything like wait, this. Wait, 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 look at this. Could this be the kind of thing that we're looking at? <gasps> look at that. Wow, that's a special parade collars made for a horse. Decorative, right? Uh, we need to track down an expert in equestrian antiquities. Okay. Somebody that knows about antique horse bridles, antique horse saddles. Yeah, and show pieces. Show pieces, like for parade horses. That's yeah. a great idea. And then we'll take this thing to them. Maybe we'll finally get to the bottom. It would never have occurred to me that this device was used on an animal. My interest is really peaked now. I am really excited about doing this dark appraisal at the Criminals Hall of Fame Wax Museum. I mean, you never know who's gonna come through the door, what they're gonna have with them. For me, it's just like Christmas. But this is certainly German, Second World yeah. War. I would say something like this to, to a Second World War collector in this good of a condition would be, I don't know, upwards of 500, possibly more. That one, on the other hand, this one you've got here, this thing obviously was buried. Whoever was wearing this was catastrophic damage, you know, to the helmet. Maybe an exploding artillery shell, you know, shrapnel hit the head. This person likely died. It doesn't have the same value. Because of the condition, we're looking at something, you know, maybe $300, $200, $300. Wow. I just thought it was scrap. Like, yeah, no. it looks really bad. No, no, no. just uh, take care of them. They're great pieces, and yeah, thanks for bringing them. I'm surprised, <laughs> Yeah. happy. I don't know if I'll sell it, though, but it's, it's nice to know. It's good to have that as an option. <laughs> um, this one in particular, I want you to check out. It was uh, my great-grandfather's in World War I. Oh, it's got quite a history to it, then. Well, it's got a date on it. I'm seeing it's got a crown, which means it was likely British manufacturer. And this piece here, this is interesting, this indent here, it's called a fuller. And what a fuller does is really horrible. When you stab somebody with this, the flesh kind of just folds a little bit more open where the fuller is. And when you pull this out, the person bleeds profusely. This kind of thing probably has a lot more sentimental value to you, seeing as how it's from your grandfather, as it would to a collector. This thing could go like really tops, maybe, maybe $100 if you can oh, move yeah. it to $125. But it's a great piece, you know, and I, I'd hang on to it for the memories. Right. I was hoping you'd help me with this. I found this in an old sewing kit that was passed down to me. Well, number one, I don't, I don't believe this is from North America, and it's a lot older than any old sewing kit I've ever seen, because I don't think it's for sewing. Uh, I, I believe it's medieval. It certainly looks like it's made out of <laughs> solid silver, but what it did, this is, yeah, there's a needle that comes out of it, but this isn't a sewing needle. I think what this is, and this would make it one of only a handful in the world, incredibly rare, is a witch pricker. 
In Europe, during the great witch hunts of the 1500s to 1600s, uh, there were some countries that believed that a witch would have a birthmark or even something small like that, oh, yeah. that if you pricked it with a needle, they would feel no pain. And henceforth, if you felt no pain, you're a witch. What's interesting about this is this thing, although the needle slides out, the needle can also slide in. Watch this. I'm making it appear like it's going into your skin. Mm -hmm. But you're not in pain, are you? No. Guess what? Witch. You're a witch. I know, it's a scam. <laughs> it's a total scam. This piece here, I'm telling you, this could be worth a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> Well, the historical <laughs> connotation behind this is incredible. It could even go much higher to the right collector. You're kidding. No. Higher than that. So what are you gonna, what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> I don't know what I can do with it. I was contemplating wearing it as a necklace, but now I don't think I want to. <laughs> Would you be interested in selling it? Suppose I were to go to the, the higher end and offer you, say, $1,500 for it right now, here today. I think I'd sell to you, yes. Done. It's in good hands. $1,500. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much yes. for this. I'm glad I came here today. Remarkable piece. Thank you. The price that Steve put on the item to me was above and beyond what I thought I was going to get. <laughs> I came here just wondering what this was, and I walk out holding over $1,000 in my hand. I'm speechless right now. <laughs> Today we're going to meet with equestrian historian Joyce Mueller, and I hope she can tell us what this unique belt is actually all about. Wow. Well, it's old. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like this before? No. You seem Never. pretty. You seem pretty shocked. I am. Let's just look at the basics of it. It has a roughly oval outline. Okay. Um, it has some articulating pieces, but. They don't have a lot of movement to them, so it's not something that was designed to be moved a lot. With the locking mechanism that you have here, and basically it's a, it's a slot that you insert another piece in and you put another pin. This lock was not meant to make this piece adjustable. This lock was just meant to make this piece closed. Right. Yeah. So this piece hung in this manner. That makes awesome. a lot of sense. That's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that yeah. makes total sense. So we are not looking at something for humans here. We're looking at some kind of a collar. Right. The other thing that fits about this is if these were here, they could attach it to the bridle. So you want to start making oh. bets if this is going to go on a horse or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah get your money out. <laughs> There's an easy way to find out. Let's where... check it out. Hey, hey. Wow, there he is. Is. <laughs> All right. Hopefully he'll be okay with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. you'll be okay. He sees what's happening. Good boy. You getting bling? Yes, you are. <laughs> Bingo. Wow. There Check we go. Out. Yeah. And if you take wow. a leather strap and bring it up here. Right. Look at that. That'll keep yeah. that from moving. So my thinking is, it's quite possible this piece could be part for horse armor. Armor? Oh. Horse armor of that type probably existed anywhere from 1400 up to about oh, the 1700s. Geez. I'm sorry, I'm seeing dollar signs here. We're seeing, we're seeing a museum piece here, right? Yes. And Holy it's, it's probably quite valuable, right? Yes. Is this, is this <laughs> yes. better than the harem okay. belt to you, Much Steve? better than the harem <laughs> belt. It's very exciting. It's I'm glad you brought it to my attention. Vita Varese owns a torture museum in Switzerland. He's been a collector his whole life and a historian on these devices. I'm showing him the flesh ripper so he can tell me if this thing's authentic or not. Have you had a chance to look at the pictures I sent? Yes, I saw it. What do you think of these, Guido? Is this an authentic piece or um, are we looking at a replica? Or what exactly do we have here? You don't know anything about the provenance? No, I don't know the provenance. They certainly look old. Uh, but I don't see any signs of modern manufacture, but there's no papers uh, with them. I have to disappoint you. I think there's, I, I got some big doubts on this. I don't, don't know if that one is an authentic piece. Uh, it, for me, it, uh, it just looks too good. When you look at this one that I have up close, it's really not in that good a condition. It's broken teeth. Some of the teeth are, 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 are almost melted away. Like, it's not as clean and perfect, and the metal seems to have grooves and lines in it, like old, old, old wrought iron. So what do you think these are? If they're not, if they're not a plier to rip flesh, uh, what could they, why were they even made? I think this was made for a museum in the 90s or in the beginning of the 20th century. I think there were more museums than torture equipment. 
Yeah. And uh, so they 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 faked pieces. They did some replicas and stuff like this. You know. What do you think this is worth without knowing it's real or not? If I would see such a piece on an antique market, I would uh, pay between five and seven hundred dollars. You've cast some serious doubts here. I mean. Uh... It's got me really wondering about this piece, and, uh, you know, I appreciate your wisdom, but man, oh man, I don't know what to think now. I could be wrong. Maybe you can find another expert you, who can tell you something else, you know? There's a chance? There is always a chance. Guido's right. He's not seen pictures of these in any sort of illustrations of the period, but I'm not sure that doesn't mean that such a thing couldn't have been made, and more importantly, used on prisoners. I think there's a chance they could still be real. Now I'm really excited to meet with torture expert Mark Donnelly and hear what he has to say about these flesh rippers. I thought these were a torture tool known as flesh rippers, but I, I'm not sure. This is why we're here with you. I mean, they could just be fireplace tongs. I'm not yeah, sure. You are absolutely correct. What? Uh, really? These appear to be a set of crock jaw flesh rippers from about mid 16th century beautiful example of a horrendously heinous uh, tool for the infliction of pain. If you see how all of these teeth are sort of curved backwards. Right. Well, this isn't to hold on to something. This is to tear something loose. But the fact that this is hollowed out yeah. in here makes these exceptionally rare. Normally, when you see uh, tongs from torture chambers, they're flat. Uh, they pinch like a standard set of pliers or tongs. Okay. Yeah. The fact that this is hollowed out to accommodate something indicates that it could be used on a variety of, um, well, let's say projections from the human body. Yeah. In this case, the finger sits inside of, but you'll see that the teeth aren't actually touching my They're finger. They're not touching the finger. No, it's designed for something larger than the finger. This is designed for use against male genitalia. Oh, oh. come on. <laughs> This would be clamped on some dude's penis? It's possible. On the other hand, it's not limited to that. You could grab any part of the body. Imagine this red hot on any projection from the human body. This is designed as a, an ostentatious infliction of pain. Okay, now the burning question. What's something like this worth? I would estimate 4,000 euro, 4,500 euro. <laughs> what? No way. Um, that is a pretty good deal on fireplace tools. You might want to call your insurance agent. That's incredible. It is for something with such a grisly, grim in intention. My name is Rob Martin. I'm a blacksmith. I specialize in medieval armor and metal sculpture. It's always interesting, always intriguing to see what Steve is going to bring me next. Don't we just bring the neatest toy? <laughs> <laughs> you certainly do. It's kind of an interesting construction. They didn't seem to spend a whole lot of attention to the, the reins of the tong here. Right. But quite a bit of attention to the front part here. Right. So, There's a reason for that shape too, man. The tubular shape, apparently these were used on dudes' penises. <laughs> what? They'd heat, this, heat these red hot yeah, and right. the cylindrical tubular, yeah. you know, snout of the crocodile will grab a hold of your junk there and rip it right off rip your body it. or shred it. Rip it and cook it at the same time. This is like multi-layered horror with uh, the heat, the excruciating pain of the burning, and then the tearing of the flesh following that. This is, uh, it's yeah, a it's very a twisted mind. of craziness. You know what, I've got, I got an idea. Oh, uh -oh. Might be a little off the wall here, but uh, I picked up some chicken earlier for uh, my <laughs> supper tonight. Oh, no. What if we did a little experiment to see what uh, hot iron actually does to raw flesh? You're not putting this in the forge, buddy. I mean, I want to see the chicken burnt, but I don't want this used. Oh, I can use a pair of my tongs. I've got uh, tongs that I've made here. We could certainly just heat those up. Wouldn't have the teeth on, but we'd be able to get the effect of the, uh, the hot steel on the I'd raw like to flesh. See it. Just hang on, guys. Okay. I'm going to the fridge. Right on. This is gonna be cool. I can't wait oh, yeah. to see this. You can substitute the screams. Yes. Stop it! Yeah. Just stop it. <laughs> All right, this is awesome. Steve, would you hold this for oh, me? Oh, happily. I okay. to do something like this for a long time. So here we go. Whoa. Oh, so that's oh. the way Oh, holy oh, That's wicked. Look at the flame. This oh, is man. squealing. Oh, oh, it's, oh. This is the sizzling, man. <laughs> Flames are, that is grotesque. 
Tongs don't even have teeth, and look what it's done. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Well, I sure <laughs> wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of those things, that's for sure. Oh, man. That, wow. Look, check it out. Look at that. I cooked it. And look, there's still a piece hanging on the bottom. 